Hey guys, how's it going? My name's Grant, I'm the host of Remington Graphics, and today I'm here with you guys to take a look at the Extra Objects add-on for Blender 3D. Extra Objects is a free add-on for Blender. It's actually built straight into Blender, which is convenient. I'll show you how to enable it in a little bit. Um, but basically what it allows you to do is add extra default objects to your scene so you can get a better start to your project than you typically would. So let's go ahead and hop right into the installation, and after that we'll go ahead and look at some of the awesome things you can do with it. All right, so by default, this is what Blender's ad menu looks like. Now, of course, there are a few extra things on here that I added in, but for the most part, this is what it looks like. You get this list of objects, and all of them are really spectacular, right? They're just basic shapes. Now, if we come up to File, go to User Preferences, and you can see I'm already here, but if you click on uh, either the Add Mesh tab down here or you type in Extra Objects up here, you'll get this option that says Add Mesh Extra Objects. If we take this little box next to it, it enables it for this session. And if you want to save this so it's able or that so that it's available automatically when Blender starts, you just click save user settings. And now whenever Blender starts up, it will have this add-on enabled. So now if I go ahead and delete this boring cube and I press Shift A, look at all these different options we get down here. Holy cow. We have a couple of little options such as uh, add a single vertice or round cube. Uh, math functions, all sorts of different things you can do with this. But I'm just going to go ahead and start off by adding a round cube into the scene because it's a nice simple piece of geometry. However, a lot of these objects have parameters that you can tweak in the tool menu. Now, if you don't have this side panel open, all you have to do is press T with your mouse in the 3D view area. And if you don't have this little bottom section, because this is where it's going to be, oops, uh, if you don't have this little bottom section, it's probably down here. Just click this little plus symbol and voila, it pops up and we can go ahead and drag this out and now we can edit the parameters. So you can see with the round cube, for example, we can adjust things like radius, which makes the cube uh, bigger or smaller. We can change the amount of divisions to make it smoother. And of course, every single object has its own set of parameters that affect it differently. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at um, well, let's just go down the list, I guess, actually. So we have single vertices, which basically allows you to add a single vertice. If that isn't uh, simple enough. We have things like geodesic domes, which you can see this one has a lot of settings over here. So if we increase the frequency, it does that. You can change things like radius, eccentricity, I guess, squish, square, all sorts of different things. Oh, what does dual do? Ooh, how neat is that? That's pretty neat. <laughs> anyway. Let's go on to the next section, which is pipe joints. And this is where stuff starts getting interesting, um, especially from those of you, or for those of you who are interested in doing architectural renders or are interested in just doing any sort of render that happens in some sort of industrial area. Um, and it's gonna be these next few. So we have these all these different pipe connections, which are really useful um, for, well, putting together pipes. So you can see that's a, I forgot, I think that was a Y joint maybe. Um, oh, just an elbow. You can see you can do things like T joints. You can do all sorts of just basic pipe jointing. And um, the nice thing about this is you don't have to worry about doing this yourself because I've worked with pipes before and pipes are a total pain in the butt. So this is really nice. In addition, we have gears, which we have the uh, option to add just a standard gear cog or we could add something closer to a, um, let's see here, uh, a worm gear. All right, so I just cut out a part of this video where I tried to give a simple explanation of how gears work, and uh, well, I ended up going on for three minutes about it. Good going, Grant. Good going. Anyway, we also have these torus objects, which are pretty useless in a real environment. However, they do make cool little additions to your scene if you're going for an abstract look, and you can put materials on them to make a kind of cool looking render, regardless of anything else in your scene. Next up we have these extras, and these extras are my absolute favorite part of this add-on. One, we have diamonds, which are pretty self-explanatory. It just adds a bunch of things that look like diamonds. So you can see we can add like a gem, which is just a standard cut stone, I guess. Um, we could also add really fancy diamonds, like the brilliant diamond, which basically just has a bunch of little cuts. I don't know why I just went, to, okay, whatever. Um, anyway, we can also add uh, this thing called Beam Builder. Now this is where it really gets useful for those of you who are into architectural renders. You can see over here, we have this little drop down at the top that lets us select the type of beam we wanna make. So you can see I can make a T-beam, I can make an I-beam, for example. I remember I did a render with railroad tracks and it took me about like uh, like two or three minutes just to make a single beam and with this, I did it with a few clicks. Um, up next on our little list here, we got the wall factory, which is really nice for making some sort of medieval walls. If you guys remember, I used this add-on in my live stream, Star Wars VFX live stream, and I generated a giant coliseum using this. Um, but anyway, this allows you to basically 
change like well you can create a just a standard wall and you can change things like the size you can change like the two ends of it i guess the height of the wall you can change the edging which are these little things the overlaps at the end here um you can add windows so you can see if i don't want any openings i can get rid of it um you can also change individual characteristics about the windows like the curviness of the curve so there it's more i don't know whatever um we have these slots which are similar to something you'd see the archers use in like a Lord of the Rings type movie, they're shooting out of them. We got Krennels, which are these little things up on top. We got the shelf, which is a shelf, you know, pretty self-explanatory. And we also got steps. So it's just a bunch of really cool things that you can just generate these awesome walls with. And I, this is, I've used this thing more times than I can count in the past month. So it's really nice. It's just really, really nice. All right, up next we have, uh, well, I'm gonna skip over a few of these because Simple Star is pretty simple, Step Pyramid is pretty simple. Um, I'm gonna skip to Honeycomb because Honeycomb I think has a lot of potential for motion designers, especially because Honeycombs have become sort of a, um, a symbol of very futuristic kind of thing, the hexagon pattern and how they link together. But basically it just allows you to generate a honeycomb pattern just on the dot and then you can, well, change the edge width for one. Um, you can also change the cell diameter and if, well, once you're done making it, you can actually extrude it along the z-axis to make a really cool honeycomb pattern. I, I just thought that was kind of cool. I'm sure somebody else shares that opinion with me, but I'm sure it's not everyone. Anyway, thank you all for watching this video. I really appreciate you guys tuning in. I hope you learned something new about this really awesome add-on for Blender, so be sure to go check it out if you haven't already. And yeah, that's about it. Anyway, thank you all for watching. Be sure to stay tuned for new videos, and if you aren't already, click the subscribe button below to be notified when I make these, you know, really amazing, awesome, not really amazing, awesome videos. <laughs> anyway, once again, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Adios. Thank you.